Well, good evening. You may get out early tonight. <laughs> Baptists are good at wanting out early. Uh, well, it's uh, good to be with you tonight and have this opportunity to uh, speak to you. And uh, Brother Mike called me Monday and he said, do you mind to kind of be on standby in case, depending on how I'm doing? And I said, sure, if you'll give me a five minute notice. <laughs> well, he gave, me, he gave me a two hour notice. So, hey, I shaved and I washed my head and I took a shower and I, I've got clean clothes on. So I'm here. But it's good to be with you tonight. I, I enjoy the fellowship of this church very much, very much. And the Lord has blessed us, has he not? Uh, I want to share some thoughts with you tonight from uh, the book of Job, our Sunday school class, and probably many of you have the same cordially. Uh, just finished the book of Job. Now we're into the book of Ecclesiastes, but... I want to go back and, and look at some verses here and some other verses in the New Testament. Now, tonight you're going to have to use your Bible. There's not going to be on the screen, okay? So you're actually going to have to find these verses. It'll be the old junior sword drill contest. And when you find it, raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let's pray. Lord, we uh, are grateful for all of your blessings. We see your abundant blessings all around us. And Lord, we're grateful for it. And we pray that you will help us to share your goodness with others. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us tonight. Surely there is something you want us to say and you want the people to hear from your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would just peak our hearing tonight so we may hear from you. May your spirit speak to us through your word. May you use us to glorify Jesus, our Savior, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Job 14, 14 is a verse that uh, probably you have heard all your life. It actually is a question that all of us have or have had. Job was, uh, is one of the oldest books in the Bible. In fact, it may be the oldest book in the Bible. And Job doesn't get enough credit for the wisdom that God imparted to him. And probably most people don't read the book of Job except in the midst of tragedy or heartaches to kind of see how a human being handles real difficulty in this life and in this world. But it all comes down to this question where Job says, if a man dies, shall he live again? That's a question that all of us have asked, or if not, we should be asking, if a man dies, shall he live again? In our world tonight with uh, COVID and the variant and all these things coming our way and we see all the statistics that are broadcast and given to us, uh, we wonder what the outcome is going to be. We wonder where we're really headed. Well, I want to tell you, the truth is we're all headed to the same place. However, we're not headed there without hope. We're headed there with a faith that gives us the hope that we know the answer to this question. If a man dies, shall he live again? And of course, Jesus answered this question in John's Gospel, chapter 11, in verses 25 and 26. But I want us to look at some of the things that the book of Job has to say about this. You know, uh, 
science thinks that they have the answer to death. They do not. Government doesn't have the answer. There is no answer to death but God. This book is the only word that we have that we can pin our hopes on, that we can establish a foundation for our lives and for our future in eternity. It's here. That's the reason we're encouraged to read it, because in reading this book, it increases our faith. It builds our faith. It, it gives us the hope that we need to carry on as God's people in a world that is filled with disappointments as Job experienced. But you know, Job says some things in this, in this book about uh, how God has placed within us that desire to live forever. That's a God thing. We don't want to die. We want to live. But God has put that hope in our hearts because we are made in the image of God. Job also has this, these uh, words of, uh, of encouragement in the uh, 18th and that, well, the 19th chapter of the book of Job. When he says, you know, there's hope with a tree. A tree can be cut down, but he says with water, it sprouts again. So why aren't we more important to God than a tree? And then the very justice of God requires that man lives again. Do you know that there are places that uh, men do not face the penalty for their sin or for their tragic lives that they've perpetrated on other people. Uh, you know, we, we look at the wars that have been fought, especially World War II and the atrocities against the Jewish people. It's, it's true that it seems like Hitler the man who is said to have been responsible for the death of 50 million people never faced judgment. But one day he will because the justice of God requires that there comes a time where man must stand before God and God says, you cannot pass. You must face the consequences of your deeds. Well, in that respect, most people are not encouraged by the fact that if a man dies, shall he live again? And hearing the answer of Jesus, yes, because they prefer that man just be annihilated or that for some reason we just become extinct. There's nothing left of us. We're gone. We're forgotten never to be remembered again. And you know, that's what some people's wishes are. But the Bible gives us real hope. And this is the hope that we have. And it's found in John's chapter, John chapter 11 and verse 25 and 26. These are the words of Jesus when he said, to Mary and Martha, Martha at the grave of Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And Martha answered, Lord, I believe you are the Christ. Well, I want to tell you, that's the correct answer. And that's the answer that I hope you are able to give about your hope of the future, about your ultimate facing of death, is that you know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and you do believe it. The Apostle Paul 
stood on Mars Hill and he recounts these words from Acts chapter 17. Maybe it would have been best if we'd put these up on the board so I could have read them and not had to look for them. <clears throat> Acts chapter 17, verse 31. He's, he's, he's addressing a group of people who worship all kinds of gods. Oh, they believe in God. They just don't know the one true God. They relish the fact that in their ingenuity and education, they've made themselves many gods. So perhaps through the multiplication of all these deities, we'll find some help when we need it. But the Apostle Paul says in addressing these people, he says that God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. The apostle Paul is declaring to these pagan folks that Jesus is God and that he is the Savior. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Over 2,000 years ago, the baby was born. He lived a perfect life. He died a sacrificial death. And on the third day, he rose again. That's our Savior. Now, here is the fact of the validity of the resurrection. This was not a spiritual resurrection. This was a physical resurrection. I want to tell you, that's important, I think. It's important for us to grasp the truth of that. We know he lives. Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about all the witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to tell you the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is one of the most absolutely verified facts of history. He is alive and because he lives, we live too. Our faith in Jesus Christ gives to us the hope of the future. That's our hope. Our Lord Jesus came and suffered and died and rose again so that we too could live. The Apostle Paul ends that 15th chapter this way by saying, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? And he concludes, our victory is in the living Lord Jesus. And I want to tell you, all around us are evidences of his presence and his power. And we ought to be excited about that, and I hope you are, and I, I hope you're not discouraged. You know, some people say, well, you shouldn't talk about death because it, it just, it's a downer. Well, I want to tell you, for the Christian, it ought to be an upper because it's the promise of eternal life to be in the very presence of the Lord Jesus. One of the verses that I, that have, I have come to love and appreciate and one of the few that I've been able to memorize is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I hath not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those that love him. The future's bright. I'm telling you, our old world we're living in is winding down. And if you've been here as long as I have, 
and I'm happy to report I'm older than most of you. I see a couple that maybe I'm not. But I want to tell you, I'm excited about the future because I see the degradation of our society. I see the dumbing down of everything that we used to hold dear. Everything. I mean, from the top to the bottom. But our Lord Jesus has promised us that the future is bright in him. I trust that your faith is in Jesus Christ, the living Lord Jesus. And thank God, he's coming again one of these days, and I prefer to see the upper taker than the undertaker. And that's my hope in Jesus. Well, I can see I have uh, 13 minutes left. But my dad said, son, stand up, speak up, shut up, and sit down. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? <laughs> Lord, we're grateful for the promise of the future. We're grateful for the promise that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, there's not a single one of us tonight that think we deserve it. For Lord, surely if we thought we deserved it, we would never know it. But we humble ourselves before you to thank you for the life and the hope we have in Christ. And Lord, may we not be discouraged, but may we, we be lifted up. And we pray for our pastor tonight, especially, Lord, that you would bring healing to his body and give him strength and empower him to preach your word to us, to our hearing and to our hearts. For we pray this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.